Stop throwing away your money on these seven supplements unless your doctor advises otherwise. Top of the list, calcium supplements. Seriously, I bet your doctor is drilling into you the importance of calcium for sturdy bones. Those TV milk ads, they're all shouting about the necessity of calcium for robust bones, aren't they? Granted, calcium is a key player in the composition of bone structure. No proof that popping a calcium supplement will actually channel calcium to your bones. Ironically, there's evidence suggesting that calcium supplements might stash calcium in your blood vessels, a place you definitely don't want it. Your diet provides an abundance of bioavailable calcium, especially in veggies and dark leafy greens. Animal protein and fish also contribute a decent amount of calcium, not to be ignored. Curiously, those with impressive life expectancies, such as the Axiaroli in southern Italy, are folks who indulge in small fish, particularly anchovies. Sardine eaters, what are they eating? They're eating the calcium in the little bones of these fish. And so if you really want to spend your money on a calcium supplement, buy some sardines, buy some anchovies. That's the way to get your calcium. Number two, multivitamins. So multivitamins have been around forever. Unfortunately, multivitamins were developed based on examination of 20 college students in New York City in the 1920s when the federal government was trying to determine what would be the bare minimum amount of various vitamins and minerals that somebody should have to avoid diseases. Diseases like beriberi, diseases like pellagra, which you probably never heard of. And they wanted to find the bare minimum that would be necessary. So they looked at the blood work of 20 college students and said, well, this is what these kids are eating and this is what their blood work looks like and they're healthy college students. So that's probably what we need. And that was actually the basis for the recommendations of the minimal daily requirement of vitamins and minerals. Now, the minimum daily requirement, unfortunately, has nothing to do with the amount you need for good health. That's totally different. I'll give you an example. The minimum daily requirement for vitamin D is about 400 international units a day. And yet the University of California San Diego research shows that the minimum daily requirement for the prevention of cancer is 9,600 international units of vitamin D3 daily. And that's nowhere near 400 international units. Recently, there's been a very good paper showing the higher your vitamin D level is in your brain, the better your neurons work. Exactly the opposite of what a minimum daily requirement of vitamin D would say. 80% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D, regular vitamin C tablets. Now, vitamin C is essential, let's make no mistake about it. We unfortunately, like most other animals, do not manufacture our own vitamin C. So we have to acquire vitamin C from our diet. How do we do that? Well, long ago, it's conjectured that great apes and us stopped making vitamin C because we were always eating vitamin C living in tropical rainforests, not only in the fruits, but also in the leaves of the plants that we were eating. Guinea pigs don't make vitamin C for the same reason. They get it from their diet. Strangely enough, vitamin C is made from glucose and there are five genes that control this five enzymatic steps that take glucose and turn it into vitamin C. We lack the fifth gene. It's a ghost gene. Why is that important? Let's take rats. Let's genetically engineer them so that they carry the human vitamin C producing pathway where the fifth gene is a ghost. Those rats live 50% shorter lives than rats who manufacture their vitamin C. Whoa, 50% shorter lives. Now, here's the exciting news. If you put vitamin C in the drinking water of those vitamin C deficient rats, they will live exactly as long as the rats who make their own vitamin C. So what does that tell you? We really have to have a continuous source of vitamin C in our diet. How do you do that? Well, if you just swallow a vitamin C tablet, that vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin and it will be gone out of your system in about two to four hours. So the options are take timed release vitamin C. I personally take 1000 milligrams twice a day of time to release vitamin C. If that's too much to ask, get yourself some chewable vitamin C tablets or carry around some 500 milligram vitamin C tablets and swallow them four times a day. 
but what you're looking for is a continuous exposure in your body to the benefits of vitamin C. But just swallowing one once a day is really not going to do you much good. Number four, ketone drinks. Okay, ketone drinks are a hot item. You wanna be able to swallow your ketones. Here's the problem. Ketone drinks, quite frankly, taste terrible and they're really expensive and there's so much easier, cheaper ways to make ketones. And that is MCT oil. So if you're gonna have a ketone shot, just have a tablespoon of MCT oil. The MCT oil will produce ketones automatically and it's cheap and you can even buy it at Costco. Don't waste your money on expensive ketone drinks. Number five, low quality probiotics. Here's the problem with probiotics. The vast majority of probiotics you're gonna spend your hard-earned money on are probably not gonna make it past the acid in your stomach to populate the gut that you need. So if you're going to get probiotics, look for either spore-forming probiotics that will resist gastric digestion or look for probiotics that are enteric-coated that resist gastric acid and will dissolve once the probiotics get to their destination in your intestines. So, gotta know the delivery device. Now, the other thing that's important to realize about probiotics is that almost all of these probiotics are not native to our gut, and they will go on vacation in our gut if they can get to your gut, but they'll leave after a couple of weeks. So, probiotics are something that should be a part of a continuous maintenance program for your gut. The vast majority, though, of probiotics don't have these characteristics. Don't waste your money. Number six, vitamin E. Vitamin E, most vitamin E that you're going to buy either in a multiple vitamin or separately is actually the wrong form, the wrong isomer of vitamin E. And you should realize that vitamin E is actually two different classifications of vitamin E. Don't waste your money on vitamin E supplements. There are tocotrienols and tocopherols, and only specific ones from these families offer any benefits. Combining them with a broad spectrum vitamin E might nullify each other's advantages. Moving on to number seven, iron. Many of you who've been following me know that iron is one of those things that accelerates aging. We essentially rust from iron, and studies indicate that individuals who donate blood tend to live seven years longer than those who don't. Interestingly, women outlive men by seven years, partly because women, for a good portion of their lives, donate blood monthly, unlike men. Occasionally, iron deficiency can occur, especially in women with heavy periods requiring temporary iron supplementation. For men or women post-menopause with iron deficiencies, it's crucial for your doctor to investigate the underlying cause. Aging often leads to iron deficiency through blood loss, which shouldn't be the norm. So, circling back to the main point, supplements don't provide much help. A recent significant study in Gamma supports this, suggesting that these kinds of supplements are essentially a waste of money, echoing my initial point. Keep in mind, these studies focus on the recommended supplement dosages by the USDA. Honestly, it's no surprise they found these supplements ineffective. The dosage was way too minuscule. When you come across such studies, don't dismiss supplements outright. Scrutinize the dosage they investigated with a discerning eye. The real key lies in how much of a specific supplement you consume. Supplements can be fantastic for your health, provided you know the necessary dosage for effectiveness.